Alrighty, hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Simulation. Now, about a year ago, I made a little comparison between Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and X-Plane 12. Back then, Microsoft Flight Simulator was way ahead, pretty clearly. I wanted to follow up on that and see where we are one year later. What have both sims done to improve? Has X-Plane 12 caught up to Microsoft Flight Simulator? What's the general situation between these two competitors? But the truth is, there is no competition. Let's start with my personal usage. On my YouTube channel, there are 29 videos where I use Microsoft Flight Simulator and 9 where I use X-Plane 12. Comparisons not included. That's a ratio of about 3 to 1 in favor for Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, my channel does not necessarily represent my private usage. Here, Steam tells me that I have about 950 hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator and about 130 in X-Plane 12. And believe it or not, with that, I'm actually helping getting the ratio up for X-Plane 12. If we look at the overall Steam numbers, the result is shocking. 10,000 to 600 in the 24 hour peak, that's 94% to 6% in favor of Microsoft Flight Simulator. On Twitch, Microsoft Flight Simulator has about 400,000 followers, while Xplane 12 has about 3,200. That's 99.2 to 0.8%. As I was saying, there isn't really any competition. Xplane 12 basically doesn't exist. Instead of making another comparison, I want to talk about why I think x 12 does so badly and why I believe this bears a lot of dangerous potential for a flight sim market. Under the comparison that I did a year ago, someone commented something like, dude, I got all the simulators, but somehow I'm finding myself using x 11 over and over again. And I totally have to agree with this guy. I kind of felt similar a year ago, and in hindsight, I'm feeling bad for not articulating this back then. Remember that Steam Active Player chart I showed earlier? Let me show you another one that's even more damning. And the Twitch numbers again back this up. x 12 can't even beat an earlier version of itself. And why would it? This is something I should have recommended a year ago. If you like x stick to x 11. Let me give you a practical example. I wanted to do a cargo flight and I wanted to do a flight in the 777. So I got the Worldliner 777. As you can see, it uses air cycles from February 2012. It also uses textures from 2006. Why is that? Remember when I told you last year we would get all the x 11 planes in x 12? Well, I didn't think it would be this quickly. It takes PMDG now almost four years to adapt the 777 from prepared to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yet we got almost all of the x 11 aircrafts in x 12 within months. Again, why? Because they didn't need to adapt much. Because it's basically the same sim. x 12 is essentially an x 11.8. This is why we get these horrible texture qualities. Using the same outdated engine does not force any plane developer to update the planes in any meaningful way. Remember the Ultimate A350? That plane looks like from X-Plane 10, as does the 777 Worldliner, because essentially they are. And this is what happened when I tried to use the Magnite 787. Did they even once try it out on X-Plane 12? All these developers were never forced to update anything, and it shows. And that's what it feels like. It feels like nobody bothered, nobody cared. The Worldliner is on sale currently. All the x aircraft are on sale all the time. Because nobody wants them. Nobody gets excited about a new cool airplane like in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Because everyone knows they're just getting the same old rubbish from 10 years ago. So they might as well stick to the simulator from back then too. The exception here is the Zebu 737 and the TODIS Airbus. I know I'm somewhat a little fanboy of TODIS myself, but... I see them constantly updating their planes, so I know they're really putting in the work. They also have newer versions of the Airx cycle. They're not the latest, but they're okay for most of the time. But again, you can have all these in X-Plane 11. That's the sad truth. You like X-Plane? Just stick to X-Plane 11. You get the same graphics and the same tools as Blue Cinema. You get the same planes and the same add-ons. The videos I'm showing in the background here are all X-Plane 11. That looks pretty okay to me. If you want more than Pretty OK, go to Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're OK with Pretty OK, stick to x 11. So what's settled then? We just use Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and move on. No, I don't think it's that simple. Because we need a good x -plane. Not just because we deserve it, but mainly because of the competition. I know there's prepared, but while the home license is about the same price as x -plane Microsoft Flight Simulator, the planes are way more expensive. And I don't think that prepared as a serious alternative to X-Plane as an alternative to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I want a strong and competitive X-Plane to keep Microsoft on their feet. I don't know about you, but when I saw this FS 2024 trailer, I was pretty disappointed. A lot of missions, rescue people, put out forest fires, land on oil rigs. And I don't have any problem with that as such. 
but I hope they don't shift their focus away from flight simming too much. Or maybe I'm too pessimistic. We'll see about that. Point is, I want a strong competition between these two sims. And currently we don't have that, as the numbers show. And I don't think that's a good thing. And by the way, being a fanboy, validating everything Lamina and the plane developers are trying to pull will only contribute to the downfall of x -Plane. Okay, let's see what the future holds. I will keep following both sims, but my recommendation from last year still stands. As it is currently, Microsoft Flight Simulator is the way to go. I mean to fly. In any event, talk to you soon, take care and tschüss.